Hi guys, it's uh, Fede Master Gari here, and uh, I just want to show you possibly one of the most beautiful games, I, or at least the most beautiful move I ever played um, in my life so far. So I thought it was a really cool game, and I'd like to share it with, share it with you today. So um, it was played against a uh, really strong, probably one of the strongest players in chess.com, uh, International Master Mark Esserman. And I got a situation where I could... Uh, emulate one of the immortal games. So I would like to call this my immortal game <laughs> of chess.com. So he opened up with e4 and uh, I replied e5. He played knight f3, knight c6, fairly standard stuff. We should be fine knight f6, d3, bishop c5, just developing moves. Um, he obviously didn't go for the Berlin endgame. So I'm just playing similar to some Italian style. Okay, so uh, he pinned, but as we know, this pin is not as effective uh, when black hasn't castled because black can afford to expand on the king side. So I that's what I did. Maybe it was a bit too premature, uh, but I still did it. But here is the juicy part. White sacrifices his knight so he can get Possibly the knight back. It is a three minute game, but uh, still um, So I have to be careful a bit But here's where it starts. Here's where the fireworks start first. I knew that since um, I'm under a lot of threats. I have to make threats back otherwise He's he's gonna just overwhelm me with his attack. So <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I played rook g8 the best offense best defense is offense that's what they say so I attacked the bishop he supported it still I think there's a threat of queen in uh, f3 my knight's pinned I can't play anything like queen knight d4 yet so here I decided to be aggressive I just took the bishop because I knew that maybe I can transform his attack and then convert it into an attack by me it's like you know like judo or Aikido, where you transform the opponent's energy and then reward it back to him. So uh, the fact that he sacrificed and opened up files against me, I'm going to use that against him. So he took back and I put my knight on this really strong square. Um, with this conjunction with this bishop, it's, it's really uh, attacking the king here. And also, the queen is coming in. So again, I'm using his energy against him. So he played queen d2. And now, now is the move that is very shocking. So try to take a few seconds or as much time pause the video and see what move that black can play here that will that will basically be a complete devastation for white. It's a move that is very unorthodox. It's it's rarely seen. It's aesthetically pleasing, um, but it's totally crushing. It activates two of black's pieces and starts a mating attack that is unstoppable so find it i hope you found it so basically i gotta get this queen in the attack but unfortunately this pawn is protected and in the way so i want to get the queen here so how do i do that the answer struck me right away i played this move in less than three seconds i played king to e7 <laughs> forget about castling forget about bringing out the pieces well bring out the rook in the classical way. I just wanted to mate him right away and threatening queen h8 and then queen h2 checkmate. Also unpinning this knight, which I barely even realized because all I cared about was getting my queen out, but that's brutal. I realized that um, he could counterplay with uh, g6, which is what he did, but this doesn't even work because I could do an attack back. So... I just went on with the uh, queen h8. Now this is actually forced. There's no way to stop this checkmate. Let's go back a couple of moves to see what else he could have. Could he play g3? Queen h8. King g2. Escape that way? Well, let's see. This doesn't work because this knight that was unpinned just mates him. Unbelievable, right? This is protected by that, so... Knight is covering all these squares and it's just checkmate. Devastation. 
all these squares are covered by um, the pieces. So brutal. So going back, there's literally no way to stop it. This pawn is pinned by the bishop. The rook takes too many moves to get out of the way. Um, so let's see what happens. So after g6, queen h8, rook e1. I just checked. Now there's probably a bunch of different ways to win, but I decided why allow him to escape. So I simply played the move knight d4. And now there's literally no way to stop queen h1. All these squares are controlled and there is no escape and white resigned here. So in 15 moves, I, I won the game and I like to call this my immortal game because of the way that um, I activated my king, my queen with king e7. It's, it looks like a beginner move, but actually um, it's quite beautiful. And you know, sometimes you gotta break the rules in chess. Um, you only transform when you break the shackles of um, your, you know, whatever uh, rules that you learned, um, it only applies, general principles don't apply to concrete situations. So in tactical situations, you gotta use calculation and concrete moves, not just principles. Because every position is unique. And if there's any truth in chess, it's probably uh, lies in uh, calculation. I think Wesley So said in a tournament recently, he said, I realized that chess is 95% calculation. And I, I agree with them because once you learn all the rules, it's, it is 95% calculation. So, um, hope you enjoy the game and uh, yeah, I will uh, talk to you guys next time.